Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back on Harry, and uh, I need to do something about quietening it down because this is far too loud. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, many of you know Harry. This is my 1974, backdated to 1973, inspired uh, 911 with lots of modifications in lots of ways. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can have a look at that compilation video. Um, I, I go back and watch it myself every now and then just because uh, I uh, just forget how much I've put into this. But this thing is fantastic. I've already done sort of an eight day road trip in it going all the way down to Tasmania. It's a great fun car for a lot of things, but on the freeway cruising, it is just too loud. This exhaust is, it, even with headphones in, um, you know, trying to listen to podcasts on the music or whatever, the, the vibration, the, the, the drone just penetrates my skull. It is so loud and uh, yeah, I need to do something about it. I actually am doing the Adelaide Rally in, um, uh, it's actually just over a week away. And that means that I have to get this to Adelaide and I'm driving it from where I am to Adelaide, which is about 1300 kilometers. It's a 800 miles, something like that, I, I suppose. Um, so I don't wanna have to live with this the whole way. I wanna make it a little bit more tolerable for that sort of long trip. The whole idea of this car is something that I can drive that distance, get there, be refreshed, and, uh, and enjoy the event while I'm there, and then drive it home, and that's the plan. So we have done already, uh, this is currently version three of <laughs> the exhaust. Time to tackle version four, and hopefully this is the one that sticks. All right, so I'll take you through now my current exhaust. So uh, I've got these, which are I think one and five eighths inch uh, headers from Design 911. Uh, I think these really helped out and, and really opened up and let Harry breathe a lot more. So I think that was a good addition. And then I went through to currently this muffler, which is just basically a straight through muffler, but it's got uh, two passes through it. So the left bank comes through, goes through the muffler. It's just, just a straight through pipe. Uh, comes out the other side and then the right goes through the top and through and out the other side So it's just a glass pack muffler straight through with perforated holes You can see all the way through it and it really does very little to quieten down So I'm going to pull this off and then I'll show you what my plan is moving forward and we just need to see what we can fit So my plan to quiet Harry down is I have Two of these, which is a stainless steel triple pass muffler. So the thing about this is that the, uh, the air comes in one, it goes through around something like that and comes back out. Uh, gonna be much quieter, there's two of them. The plan is, is to stick them up somewhere like this, either side. The exhaust gases come out of these outlets, come across, join into a merge collector. So I'll get two uh, bends and join them in the center and then back into the mufflers and then out the sides and come back out around and face forward or face rearward, I should say. That's the plan. So um, now it's time for a little bit of uh, head scratching, working out how I'm going to fit them on the car, how I'm gonna hold them in place and uh, see if we can start making something that uh, works. So here you can see I'm cutting my donut up, up into even pieces and then going over to the linear sheet and make sure they're nice and flat. Now I'm doing a nice straight cut over each side of the donuts to join them together to make my crossover pipe. All right, so I started with a full stainless steel donut that I've cut in half and then I cut a little shape out of either side so that these will sit together nicely and make my crossover tube. So having the two exhausts like this helps scavenge the other side. So 
as you can imagine, the, uh, the engine runs sort of a pulse from one side, from one cylinder, then another pulse, and they alternate pulses, and each pulse helps draw through the other side, and it uh, helps balance out the, the, uh, the, the engine and stuff like that. And Apparently, you don't actually need anything this big. I am more doing this mainly because I need to um, get these mufflers as close to together as possible because I don't have much space. So by... Uh, I said that that was as big as I really wanted to make them. So I'm going to tack them together now. I'm just going to note that I actually changed over to stainless steel wire on the MIG. Um, you can get stainless steel wire, so I'm going to be TIG welding these, but I'm going to MIG them all together to start with. And the less that I use, if you use regular mild steel MIG wire, you can go over it with this TIG, the stainless later, but uh, it's better to just do it with stainless from the start. And so that's what I'm going to do. Let's tack these together and, uh, and then start seeing how we can go getting the mufflers all lining up and stuff. Before I go too much further, I'm welding the inside of the donuts as they only come with the outside welded. That would be quite difficult to do once the whole unit's together. So we'll do it now, save me headaches later. All right, so I've got my crossover pipe. I've now trimmed up my exhaust. I've got them as close together as they're going to get. And uh, I've sort of laid them out on the bench. I'm using the edge of the bench to try and get them all square and level and, and even. And uh, uh, this is roughly where I think I need to keep my uh, crossover tubes. So I need to keep the uh, other pipes coming in from the headers running pretty much parallel, very close to the back because I need to keep this tight uh, to fit it all in. So. Um, I'm going to now have a go at uh, tacking this in, making sure I've got enough room to go around and weld it all together when I'm done. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, just, we'll just see if this fits. I can, once it's tacked together, I'll be able to take it in in one piece and see if I can fit it where it needs to go. So you can see here that I've tacked them together nice and square and now I realize they don't fit. So I have to break the tacks and get them at a slight angle so that they can sort of curve around with the rear bumper. All right, I've tacked uh, my exhaust together. I had to actually untack them and had to make them at a slight angle because it wouldn't fit otherwise. And even as it is, this is a tight fit. So uh, if I get this up under here, That's where it needs to go. And yeah, it's tight, but, uh, but it fits. So I'm always happy to recycle, so I'm scavenging bits off of my previous exhaust and uh, reuse some of the bends and joiners. All right, so I have it now held into place with my gearbox stand, holding it up there, and you can sort of see that I have my outlet here that I have to make go over and I don't know if you can see up there, it's got to connect up here. So I've got to make a pipe from there to over there. And then on the other side, so I've got to make this one turn up from here and run along and go into that one there. So that's what I'm going to start tackling now is joining up the, uh, the pipes and then see if we can actually get a working exhaust. So you can sort of get a bit of an idea of the process here, which is all just Line it up, mark it, trim it, do it again, line it up, mark it, trim it until it all fits nicely. And once I'm happy with it, I'll weld up the middle sections as much as I can on the bench beforehand because I won't be able to get around these bits later. All right, well, it's a lot of cutting and splicing and sort of take a measurement have a go, take a measurement, have a go to get the uh, the pipe in uh, the right angles. And I've got it here. I've welded the bit in the middle because I won't be able to get to it once it's together here. But I'm going to hold it up now. And if I can wrangle it into place, I'm going to tack it in with the MIG. And, uh, and then we can move on to the other side before we uh, pull it all apart and weld it up for good.
So you can see the linisher is really handy with this sort of work to get a nice clean even join makes TIG welding much easier if the joins are really nice and neat. All right, so we have one side tacked in, uh, the other side tacked in, and I've also got these hose clamps here actually go around the original factory mount that was uh, up on either side. So that's actually what's taking the weight of the exhaust. It's not just hanging off of the headers. So we have it all tacked together. So now we need to tackle making exhaust outlets for either side. So you can see here that I'm just going around now and TIG welding everything together. Yes, it is stainless steel and no, I am not back purging it. I am quite happy that the welds will be plenty strong enough like I've done on all of my other exhausts. Uh, it's not going into food preparation and uh, it's not going into a turbo or anything where anything is going to do something nasty to the engine. So uh, I'm quite happy welding stainless, just <laughs> raw dogging it. So I have a mix of horrible welding and sort of not too bad a welding. I've found increasing my gas flow has really made it uh, flow much better and, and made a much better result of the welding. But we have the basic exhaust all welded up now and I have trimmed off of the ends on either side so that we can now mount it back into the car and try and start making the exhaust tips. All right, and that is back on and it fits, which is a good thing. So uh, it's all done up. Uh, it's all hanging the way it's supposed to. And we are looking good. So now, as you can see, I've hacked the bumper a couple of times previously to fit the uh, other exhaust in. These are gonna have to sit wider and come out where um, you can see a little bit of a curve here was where the, uh, the, the original exhaust I made sat. I'm gonna try and make them come out and sit as close to the muffler itself as possible but um, we're just going to have to have a bit of a play around and see what we can do about getting some exhaust tips that uh, fit the part. All right, so I've gone through and I've started cutting up my donut. And uh, actually, one of the little tips I uh, use to cut up my donuts to try and get them reasonably level and accurate is just drawing up a bit of a, um, a star on my bench. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but basically I've just done uh, 90 degree and then 45 degree cross so that I can sort of sit the donut in the middle, just eyeball it and uh, I can line it up and then mark out where my angles are on the donut so that I can sort of you know, work out roughly 45 is and all the rest of it. It's not scientific, but it's sort of hard with these, these things. The other thing that I do use is uh, I use my cable tie to try and get a straight cut. So I put a cable tie around it and then draw next to it. Now it can sort of get wonky a little bit. So it's not, you've still got to, eyeball it again and try and get it reasonably right. And I try and move it, um, when I get it in line, I try and sort of slide it backwards and forwards just a little bit, just so that it, um, it's running as true as I can get it, as opposed to having it sort of slightly wavy. I mean, it stays pretty good. So uh, I'm, particularly on curves, I like the uh, cable tie, it's much better than tape because tape doesn't work very well around the curves. Use that, mark it out and, uh, and cut it into bits. I've cut my, um, other part into a couple of 45s and the 90s. And uh, I'm going to now try and make those exhaust tips and see if I can sort of fashion something that looks half decent on the back of the car. All right, so I've concocted a bit of a framework here to try and get my exhaust tips so they line up nice and straight and square. So I've, um, I've made this framework up. I've sort of uh, made it level with the bumper. So that's sort of my line of sight. 
um, and I've drawn lines on the top of the board at 90 degrees to the edge on both sides. So I can get the, uh, the tips, line them up with that and get them parallel. Now I've got to go around, I've got my uh, sort of couple of uh, pieces. I've got uh, a 45 and a 90 and then a bit of straight for my tips. And now I'm gonna have to adjust this to make it fit properly, but I can sort of sit them in there and get them sort of close. And at the moment, they're cocked in too far. So I'm gonna trim off of my, uh, my fittings and just adjust them until they sit perfectly. And then I have my exhaust tips. All right, that looks really good. I was just looking in the, uh, the viewfinder of the camera and it looks like these are skew, but I, trust me, they're level. I looked along the edge and, and they're sitting nice and even and uh, neat and tidy. So now I'm going to uh, just mark them where I'm gonna trim them back. They're only tacked on at the moment, but I'm going to, I like to sort of have them pretty much level with the, uh, the end of the bumper overrider. Um, so I'll put a mark on either one of them and uh, then I can take them off, cut them, weld them out, and we should be all done. All right, that's looking good. I am very happy with the outcome so far, but now is the moment of truth. Well, let's go and start it and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Before we take the car out for a drive and actually uh, see how that exhaust sounds, while we've got on the hoist, I wanna go around and just do a, um, uh, a check over the car before I do this big long trip to Adelaide. I'm gonna be in the middle of nowhere for a long time. Uh, so I wanna take every precaution beforehand to make sure the car is in good shape. One of the first things I like to do, get up on the hoist, even if you have to jack the car up and just spin the wheels spin the wheels, um, try and shake them side to side and see if there is anything like any play, your wheel bearings are gone or anything that seems out of, out of um, place. And, uh, and, and also you want to check any bolts and things like that. One thing that I definitely wanted to check on this wheel, this is where the power cable shorted out on the, the uh, drive shaft and some people in the comments did bring up the fact that the power had to go somewhere to get through to the, uh, the drive shaft and it would have gone the easiest way which would have been through the gearbox. So I was worried about the CV joint here and even more so than the CV joint is the bearing on the inside of the gearbox because the CV joint basically, it's not like a wheel bearing where it's spinning around and around all the time. It's basically just, it's just angling it up and down slightly as it, as it travels. So there's not a huge wear area, but there is a bearing inside the gearbox that uh, does spin around, and that's probably the more uh, vulnerable bit. But thankfully, spinning this now, it's not making any nasty noises. I've driven it probably a couple of hundred kilometers since the, uh, the incident and haven't had any issues. So I think I dodged a bullet there, but I was very, very lucky. All right, Harry is looking really good. Um, no leaks from the engine at all. It's, uh, that's all looking fantastic, which is great news. So I'm happy with the underside of the car. I think we're good. All right, well, that sounds a lot better. Uh, I'm not gonna know how it goes properly until I get it on a long drive. Short little drive around town is not really gonna tell me anything. Uh, it's more I've gotta get it out on a, on a long cruise, which I'm not gonna do till next week because I just don't have any time. So um, fingers crossed it's better. It has to be better than last time. Uh, if any of you are in Adelaide and uh, want to come and have a chat, 
Come and uh, say hi while I'm at the Adelaide Rally. Uh, there is a street party on Goodger Street on the Friday evening, I believe. Um, all the cars will be there and I'll be there. And, uh, uh, and just over the weekend, over the rally, looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. So any locals, I'll see you guys there. And uh, if not, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. See you guys.